detention. It is not great right now. It's a little stressed. <laughs> Greg keeps ours well watered, so there's never a problem. <laughs> Do you use a lot of chemical, Greg? We have a yard service do ours. Okay. It's almost worth it. The price of the chemicals alone makes it so I sometimes wonder, should we just pay someone to do it? Yeah, that's what my assumption ended up being. No, if I turn my mic on, there's a problem. That's when we get the feedback. So I'm yelling across at Donna's. <laughs> Either that or I guess I can turn mine off and yell to his. One of the two. He's got the better set of lungs. Uh, yeah, we won't go there. <laughs> Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. Sorry for the goof on my time. Oh, no. Like I said, I've been doing that a little bit here lately, too. For whatever reason, I thought we were supposed to have Bible study at 930. I'm like, where is everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Greg reminded me that you were still in, still having a service. I went, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, next week, we'll start getting back to normal a little bit more. Meets for worship. Uh, so saying, and that's going to confuse the heck out of me for Monday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just, uh, I will say this a few times today probably, but n no Sunday Bible class. We're moving to Monday nights because of the worship schedule type of deal. Monday yep. nights at 7 p.m. I'm not sure which service Sam will want to try to go to, so as soon as I talk to him today, I'll put our reservations in. Okay. Sounds good. Well, yeah, do you know if Greg's ushering yet or anything? Yeah, it's looking like we definitely need you for an usher uh, next week. Um, which which service? I would imagine uh, early service, eight o'clock. I think Donovan is good. Oh, is he doing that one? Okay, so yeah. that's right. He's back now. Um, so it's either going to be Saturday. Yeah, it's either going to be Saturday or it's going to be Sunday late because a lot of our Sunday late guys are going to be gone next week. Just let us know, and then that way we can make reservations for you. Sounds good. Will do. I forget who's going to be gone. Glenn and Derek, I think. Oh, yeah. both are gone. Okay. Yeah, so Steve Steve will be here. I think Steve's going to do it. Maybe I, I could talk to Brian. Brian Koontz. Um, he'll be able to help. The other issue is that a lot of our uh, ushers are also our technology people. So we're. True. Uh, that's why we were unable to stream this morning, uh, but we, were, we had it recorded from last night. Yeah, let's, let's wait a few minutes, just see if more people start popping up. Let's, let's wait. Two more minutes here. Pastor Shell is out at Fremont, so he's gone. It was nice to see him and Aideen last night. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I got to see a few new faces this weekend. Uh, we weren't able to make it last weekend, so that was that was nice. Hey, Pastor, who is that couple with the uh, who was there this morning with the 14-month-old little girl? They are the Steinmetzes. Uh, he is in the military, I believe, and uh, came from Florida. Originally, looks like from Minnesota, because I saw on Facebook he wears a Minnesota Vikings shirt. So. We're gonna to have to deal with that before he gets transferred over. So are they Wells members? Yeah, yep, yep. Well, it's nice to see them there. It's nice to see someone with a young one. I, I think his mom might be a teacher. Let me let me look this up. Um, Very nice couple. Yeah, they are. 
I cannot remember her name. I think it's Chelsea, but I cannot remember. Let me, let me see. I might have it. Stein, what did you say? Stein Metz. Das ist gute. Yeah, John, Deutsch, yeah. John, John and Chelsea. Yeah, good German name. That's why he has to be a Vikings fan. <laughs> <laughs> All the Bears fans were, were taken, you know. Okay, there, there's a Suzanne Steinmetz, and she's in South Dakota, so that would make sense for why he, he's a Vikings fan. <laughs> South Dakotans like their Vikings. Uh, you just didn't like the fact that we Bears fans got it covered. Oh. What's happening right now? Are we Facebook stalking potential members? Yeah. I like we, that okay. This, okay. All right. Go, stalk away. I'm. I'll. I'll just be here for Bible class when you. That's the thing you face. Facebook is a wonderful tool in finding prospects and, and reaching out to them. Yeah. Come on. Let's see those red shoes. All right. Well, looks like we got a few more people joining us. So I'm can... outside, so I'm going to leave my video off. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> looks looks like we'll get started here. Uh, uh, some more people have joined. So today, looking at Genesis chapter 28, uh, looking at a man on the run. So just just to recap, because a lot's lots been going on, a lot of, a lot of details. Abraham old man, uh, wife, Sarah, she's an old woman, have a child when he's 100, she's 90. Not that long after they have the child, um, let's see, what have 40 years after she dies. Uh, then Abraham dies, not that long after that, another 20 years or so after that. Um, Isaac, their son, he has a couple of of, of twins, or he has two twins, uh, Isaac and, and Esau, and they're complete opposites, just as it appears Isaac and Rebecca were, were very opposite from each other too. Uh, Jacob, one of the sons, the, the son who was more of the shepherd, who was more like Isaac actually, and uh, who, uh, who, who got along better with, with his mom, he stayed closer to the home, and he and his mom deceived the father and deceived Esau and got the birthright that God had promised him. When Esau came back home and he saw what had happened, that he had been robbed of his birthright, um, he asked for a blessing from dad, and his dad Isaac said, Your dwelling will be away from the earth's richness, away from the dew of heaven above. You will live by the sword, and you will serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke from you, from off your neck. So it's a sad, horrible situation. Uh, this is the interesting thing about the Bible. Our heroes of faith, those that we look up to, we do not hide the fact that they were nasty people. They were sinners, uh, just like we are. Uh, and, and the reason why God does that is to prove it's not about the people. It's about him. He's the reason why why this all happened, why it went down so well. Uh, it was in spite of his people often that, that the good things happened. So interestingly, the book of Hebrews comments on this whole event by saying, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, uh, re react to that. Because it didn't appear that and Isaac was really acting by faith too much. What do you think about that statement from Hebrews? Well, I don't want Isaac's blessing if he's going to give me what he gave the one son. Yeah, that's that's kind of an interesting blessing. Um, maybe the the only good part is he's going to throw off the yoke, but still, uh, that's I I I have a hard time. That's it's one of those situations where it's hard to interpret the Bible sometimes. Uh, it is a blessing, though, because um, how could how could this have been a blessing that that Esau had received this blessing, not the other one, not the one given to Jacob?
kind of a twist in logic, but uh, if Esau would have received the blessing as, as he hoped, God would have been a liar and uh, the Savior of the world possibly might not have come about because that wasn't, that wasn't his plan was to go through Esau. So it's actually a blessing to Esau that he did not receive uh, the, this blessing he was looking at. Uh, kind, kind of a strange twist. You, you really got to do some mental gymnastics, but, but it is a blessing to him. And uh, Isaac, by faith, thankfully it appears, uh, according to the scriptures, that uh, he, he finally understands what's going on. He was being an idiot and a doofus for, for trying to trick God uh, by giving it to Esau. Um, perhaps this scare that God had given him woke him up. So long story short, Esau wants to kill Jacob because of this whole thing. And, and Isaac and Rebekah determined to send Jacob off to Rebekah's brother, Laban. Oh, he's a fun guy. We'll get into him more next week. Uh, uh, so that he can find a wife who is a believer. Esau had married two women from the area. Uh, they were both unbelievers. We're told that uh, they were a source of grief to Isaac and Rebekah. As he heads off, Isaac repeats the blessing to Jacob, this time willingly. True, he wanted to bless Esau. He seemed to realize that Jacob was God's choice and seemed to reconcile himself to that. So Jacob heads off alone, leaving behind his mother in the comfortable tents, his father and his brother, who wanted to kill him. What emotions are, are going through Jacob's head as he, he makes his way out? I don't know. So what what what's Jacob thinking as as he's forced to flee? It's probably oh we must we got the check on that's forgot to check on that. He has to be wondering what is next. Absolutely. Um Everything is seemingly up in the air. As far as he can see, nothing, nothing is going right. Somebody else was talking, and then I cut them off. Sorry. No problem. I was going to say he has to be thinking, my brother's going to kill me. Yeah. Um, J Jacob's not exactly a manly man. Esau's, Esau is the, the, the Hulk of the, the, the brothers. And so um, not looking good for him right now. And yeah, Esau's the one who wants to murder, and yet he's the one who also gets to live at home. Uh, he's the one who still gets to receive those comforts. So, is this really worth the trade off? Um, so, uh, some of you maybe have had to to uh, go away from home before, for uh, back when you were 18. Maybe you went into the service. Maybe you went away to college. Maybe you just decided time time to, to start your own life a little bit. That's rough. It's it's not easy to to tear that bandaid off to run away from from mom and dad and the the life that that you know. Even when you're in your thirties and fifties and and you just pick up and move. It it is tough pulling up your roots and and going somewhere else. But then you throw in everything else that he's dealing with. This couldn't have been easy. We'll focus in on Genesis 28, 10 through 22 then. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. Uh, when he reached uh, Haran, uh, that, let's see, that, that would be, if you think of the map of Israel, uh, where it, it's, I believe it's Ephraim to the, the very northeast. Haram um, would, would be right to the northeast of, of that. Um, the, um, the leper, the, the military man, why can I not think of his name, uh, who Elisha ended up healing, uh, he was the man from, from that area uh, later on, much later on. Verse 11 continues, when he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. 
He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking, and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear, so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be my God's house, and of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Okay, into the questions then. Number one uh, says there, Jacob had traveled about 70 miles by this point. He's probably exhausted and lays down to sleep, and he dreams. What does he see? Uh, Donna. A ladder? Yeah. This, 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 this is a really strange word in the Hebrew. It's, uh, there, there are not many words like this, but there are times where uh, a statement is used only once in the entire Bible. And, and this is one of those words. We know it's a device that goes up and down. It's a ladder, a stairway, something like that. Uh, but but can't, can't give the exact word for it. We knew the, know the concept. It's, it's a somehow vertical bridge between us, us and, and heaven. And what's going on on this, this ladder, this stairway, this thingamajig? Donna again. Again, the uh, angels are going up and down. Everybody's yeah. coming up and down. Yeah, yeah. There, it's this passageway for, for angels. Uh, they are ascending and descending. Two says, remember Jacob had received the blessing through an act of deception. Now he hears the blessing from the lips of God himself. For what reasons would that have been so valuable for Jacob? Donna. It reiterated that it was what he should have. I mean, it it just reaffirmed it for him. Okay. Th this From a is, higher power. <laughs> yes. This is hugely important. Uh, there, there is something called the doctrine of vocation, that God has called us to specific roles, specific jobs in our lives. Um, yeah. And Danfords are, are talking about it. They, they had it here too. Uh, and so did Greg. If he had any guilt about the way he got the blessing, this would help to alleviate it. Uh, and they know that God's going forward with it. And Danford said it would add a sense of legitimacy. Right. Because this is something we deal uh, with in, I, I know it's not quite the same, but it's a similar concept with the doctrine of vocation, the jobs God has given us. You think about some of the jobs that you have in life husband, wife, um, parent, employee, employer, there, there are times in your life where you look at yourself and you say, why in God's green earth was I chosen for this? Um, and you start doing some comparison. 
Why mm -hmm. did God choose me when he could have chosen some rock star that was a whole lot better at it than, than, than this? Um, a parent feels this very often where they will take a look at their children and say, I have so messed up with, with these kids. I've done such a terrible job. I'm not like, uh, you know, Becky down the street who, uh, who, who just seems to have boundless energy to take care of her, her kids. I'm not like that. I can't seem to get off the couch some days. I'm so tired because of everything that's going on. Although parents don't have a document that, uh, that, that is there uh, to, to show them you are this child's parent, uh, they, they have the blood um, or, or they have the possibly the adoption papers that, that are proving you are this parent. Becky might be really good for, for that kid over there, but you are the person God has put in charge for, for this. God has singled you out for this role, for this time, for this thing right here, right now. Uh, it's something that, that's neat for um, the people who are, are, are called at, at Good Shepherd, too. Think about our, our teachers. You think about um, our elders, our, our council members, our Sunday school teachers, uh, any, anybody who has this, this call. Um, one of the, the neat things is, is sometimes you receive a document which, which shows you have been called, not by a church, but by God himself. The calling body was the church. It was Good Shepherd. But God called you, not, not any human being. Um, and so this, this is one of the really neat things. And that, that applies to, to your different roles in life, to, to that of uh, uh, husband, wife, single person, wh whatever you might be. God has called you to that. And Jake, this is the blessing. This is the comfort of the, the call. And uh, God's reaffirming that here for, for Jacob. I have called you to be in this line. Not, not your dad, not your mom. I have done this. It's a huge comfort. Three goes on to say, God gives some details in this blessing that might have been particularly encouraging for him. What might have been particularly encouraging for Jacob? Look, uh, especially, tw where is it there? 13 through 15, if you focus in on those verses, this dream there, what, what's particularly comforting? Uh, his promise to take care of him, Greg says, uh, that, that God will be there. He will, he will be with him. You know, Jacob has no idea what's going to go on, but God's going to be with him. Uh, one of the, the things uh, that it says there is, I am the God, of the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, the God of Isaac. Uh, so just as God was there for it, for these two pillars, so he's, he's making Jacob into a pillar. He's going to be there for them. And the same promises that he gave to Abraham and to Isaac are, are yeah, as, as the, uh, Sandy just stated, the same promises that he gave to them are now being applied to that of Jacob. That, that is so humbling and so, so amazing. Uh, this one got me today when we were singing, Be Still My Soul. I got I to gotta find the line. Um, I think it's verse 2. Be still my soul, your God will undertake to guide the future as he ha has the past. Your hope, your confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Um, you, you think about how God has so, so greatly guided the, 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 the events of the past, and we think, oh, it looks so neat and laid out and nice, but you imagine what it must have been like to go through some of those events uh, same way that it feels like right now, so much is unknown, but just as the past is sure, so is the future in, in God's eyes. That's, that's what the hymn is telling us. That's what God is saying here. 
to, to Jacob, just as I'd been there for, for Abraham and Isaac, and I did everything that was necessary. So, so I'm going to do for you. You're my man. Uh, then we get to number four. When Jacob wakes up, we're told he's afraid. Explain that reaction. natural fear of God. That, that is a concept, is it not? What, what does that mean, to fear God? What, what's all involved with that word? We, we hear it in the, um, in the catechism. We should fear and love God that we dot, dot, dot. What's it mean to fear God? I think it means holy reverence. Mm -hmm. um, but everyone, you know, theologians are wont to say all the time, it doesn't mean to have a kind of terror of God. Um, I would say that it implies that too, though. Uh, I fear God because I want to love and trust him for everything he's done to me, and I know the power he has. But I also don't want him to... Uh, call me and violating the curfew and grounding me or, you know, what an earth father to some, I mean, by, by analogy can do. Mm -hmm. This, this is a, and, and well said, this is a concept that we can talk about till we're blue in the face, face, but we will not fully comprehend here on this earth. Um, because we're, we're two separate people. There's the real us and then there's the sinner. And uh, as, as Greg said, he knows his sin. He knows what he has done. For that reason, he is terrified of God. And then there's that other aspect of us uh, where, like you said, Darren, we, we have this holy reverence for, for God. Um, and it, it's, it's a battle. What, what does this exactly look like? Uh, there, it, it's, it's, that line is kind of blurred sometimes. We, we need to try and view it through through the eyes uh, of, of a gracious God. But at the same time, we also have to realize this is a God who punishes the, uh, the, the children for the sins of the father. Th this is not somebody that we need to be taking lightly. Um, I was watching videos the other day just because I, I thought it was kind of funny. I saw one where people try and mess with the Queen's Guard when they're, they're over in, in England. And the Queen's Guard, they wear these big fuzzy uh, bear caps, and uh, they, they don't smile. They, they can't react at all. And uh, there, there were some teenagers that, that were trying to, well, mess with them a little bit. They got proved pretty quickly what these guys are capable of. These, these aren't just decorations. These are trained military uh, personnel, and they, they can mess with you pretty easily. Uh, God does that with us sometimes. When when we start uh, poking the bear a little bit, he, he will show us who actually is in, in charge. Um, um, Betty said we are to love and, and keep his commandments. Um, yeah, yeah, we know that, that that's not our motive. They, uh, the, the fear is not the motivation to keep the commandments. At least it shouldn't be. Sometimes it just switches a sin. Uh, if we, we are doing it out of fear, but um, we understand what, what is the opposite. Uh, if, if we do not love God, if we do not follow him, look what, what happens. God, God is a God who is, uh, who is jealous. Five on the sheet continues, Jacob renamed the place Bethel, Bethel. Beth means house or bait, and ale is an abbreviation for God. So Bethel means house of God. And Jacob then makes a vow. First of all, what do you like about that promise?
Yeah. Yeah. He, he's making it about God. He's remembering who God is and he's thinking of the promises he just received. Um, he's holding God to those promises. There's maybe something you don't like so much about it. Um, that this is a tough one. It's a, it's a translation issue. There, there's um, a piece of grammar called the conditional. And the conditional is something like this. If I will go to Hy-Vee, I will buy some chicken. Then, then I will buy some chicken. If then, that is, that is conditional. There are different forms of them. But, but here, uh, that if phrase is called, I'm getting into grammatical terms, but the protasis. It's if this happens, then this will happen. The then part is called the apotasis. And we don't know when the then part happens here. It can either read, if God will be with me and watch over me on this journey I am taking and will give me food to eat, blah, 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 and the stone that I have set up as God's pillar will be my house, then, and all uh, that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Or it can read as it is right now. So it could either be a really great example of faith, or it can be Jacob kind of getting it, but not really. Um, so it, it's a matter of, when, when that comes, knowing that we're dealing with both a saint and a sinner, I could see it either way. Uh, so he's either saying, if God, you, you do this for me, if you, you do exactly as I want, then I will do something good for you. If, if that's the case, not so good. But if he's saying, God, if you do this all as you have promised, uh, then I'm going to return my love to you. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's possibly what what he meant as well. Uh, that's a point of grammar we're not really sure. And um, no, the the Hebrew is is pretty obscure here. It uh, it, it doesn't give us an indication. Um, sometimes that's just what it is. And uh, not not a huge point. It's thankfully in matters of grammar, uh, a lot of times there that which is obscure is never a point that uh, we just have no idea about when it comes to doctrine. There's always something else that clarifies it in the scriptures. There's always another po uh, point made in another book or in another section that clarifies it. And here, here this is uh, thankfully not a position of, of doctrine. Um, is Jacob's level of faith does not necessarily impact us. Uh, if it were something about God and what God is like or what God does, uh, there's always something that is very, very clear uh, that makes it crystal clear in the scriptures. Uh, as Colesta said, yeah, one of the good things there too, he, he's leaving this up to God. He's putting the, the focus, the emphasis on him. Taking it home then, um, the application section, number one, God could have come to Jacob immediately as soon as he left home. Instead, God allowed him to travel for 70 miles, which probably took several days. Um, what, what do they say? For, for, for an army to march, uh, it's, 20 miles a day is a pretty good clip. I, I think that's, that's the common, common um, unit, 20 miles a day. Now, as a person on your own, maybe you can do that a little faster, but this is three to four days, maybe even more, depending on the terrain, because... Israel has some rugged terrain. So what is God teaching us by not coming to him until 70 miles have passed? Donna. Patience and perseverance. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah. He does that a lot. And we get really mad and ticked off at God sometimes, but he knows what he's doing. Um, we wish he'd be a little quicker, but uh, we deal with the God who uh, for a thousand years is like a day, and a day is like a thousand years. Um, so the class has said sometimes you have to go through the wilderness. Sometimes God is silent. That doesn't mean he's not there. All right. Um, it's 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 not in the scriptures, but it's a pretty picture of it, nonetheless, of 
of the idea of the footprints on the, the beach, uh, that, that story where you, you look back at your life and you say, God, where were you? And he said, there's only one set of footprints because I was carrying you at that point. Uh, God's, God's always there with you. Um, sometimes, too, God and his people remain silent to allow you to think a little bit. Jacob was a little bit of a jerk and a snake. He needed to, to have some silence to reflect on what had just happened. He had been an absolute jerk, like I said, to his brother, to his father. He was disrespectful. Um, he, he snaked, he lied, he tricked, he cheated. God's maybe letting them think about this, letting it, letting it hit home. Silence sometimes is one of the greatest um, greatest tools of the law. One of the best ways that the law can be applied. Um, Luther talked about this in terms of the gospel, but the same can be true in terms of the law. He, he said that uh, he can go and preach, and then he can go and, and have a, uh, a round of German beer with his, his friends, uh, Melanchthon and, and I forget who else, and then he can go home and sleep. And the whole while he's done his job, now it's time for the Spirit to do his job. Same can be said of the law. Uh, you, you say your peace and um, move on. Let the Spirit do his thing. You don't have to have that answer, boom, 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 right away. Sometimes it's okay to walk away and, and let, let him do his job. Um, or, yeah, as Greg said, the silent look from, from parent or peer when we have done something wrong will often cut to the bone. I remember this with my dad very well. That there was one incident in my life where I did something very stupid. My dad was not, not a yeller. He, he did not scream. He was pretty, pretty even keel. Uh, but one time I got a look from him and I realized, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's that's what uh, silence from God and silence from, from other believers can do to us. Two, God could have come to Jacob with words of anger or chastisement. Think of what Jacob had done. Instead, we only hear of good news and only promises. Or yes, as the Danford said too, and so when, uh, the cock crowed, Jesus just looked at him and Peter just melted. Um Think of what Jacob had done here. God only gives him good news and only promises. For what reasons does God approach Jacob this way? Alessa said he came in the, the stillness of sleep. You have to stop running sometimes to, to hear. Um, yeah, uh, here, here, here with, uh, he, perhaps now he was finally ready to, to, to hear. He, he needed to, um, he, he, he needed to have this opportunity. And this is the part where it stinks that we don't know as much uh, as, as God does, because sometimes it'd be really nice to, to know when do we give people the good news? When do we, um, when do we give them the law? Uh, when, when do they need this? Well, God knows exactly when. God knows exactly what to do. And him being God, he, he knew that now was the time. Jacob had received the law. He knew what was wrong. He knew that what he did was evil. And uh, now it's time for God to show him his love. Uh, because once a person understands that evil, boom, right on, you're, you're to the, the gospel right away. It's not a, you understand the law, and then you got to dwell on it a little bit, and then you got to think about it, and then you got to deal with it, and then you move on to the good news. It's as soon as you understand, boom, right to the gospel, right away, right to the good news of Jesus. You're forgiven. Look at what God is going to do for you and what he has done for you. 
Um, th this is a tough concept for, for us to understand as people. It, it, is, it is unnatural to us. Uh, we live in such a way and our society is designed in such a way that when somebody does something wrong, they must be punished for it. That that's just what has to happen. And that is not how God works. God already dealt with the punishment. Uh, the punishment has been answered. There, there are repercussions for, for our sins, most definitely. Um, repercussion here for Jacob is pretty clear. He's not able to, to be with mom and dad anymore. He, he's out in the middle of nowhere by himself. But this whole idea of he had to be punished, nope. No, not with not with God. God's going with the, the good news. Three, in John 1, Jesus says, I tell you the truth, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Jesus was drawing a comparison between himself and that stairway which Jacob saw in his dream. In a commentary on this section, Professor John Jeske, this is Pastor Jeske's dad, uh, comments, in Jesus Christ, God built a bridge on which he comes to us and on which we can return to him. Uh, for what reasons do you like that bridge picture? I don't know. Well, it shows you can always speak to the Lord, and the Lord is going to speak back with you. Mm -hmm. We may not hear it in words, but it's it's still a two way street, so to speak. Yes. Yep. Um, this is typically the the uh, picture presented for prayer, uh, but but here it, it's also a, a spiritual picture of of getting to God. Um, through heaven. I think about the, the temple curtain torn in two uh, that happened after Jesus died. This is the, the, the way, as, as Greg says here, it's, it crosses the gap between us and God uh, now that we're, we're able to get to him. There's no other uh, thinking of, yeah, uh, uh, John 14, no other way to get to, to God but through Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? I, I thought of Isaiah 59 too, um, but your uh, iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you. Uh, that's, that's what Jacob's had done. But now he's, he's getting this bridge. He gets to go to God. Even, even though he is a sinner, even though he's done terrible things, he, he, has this, he has this bridge to God. All right. Uh, last one. This is one you can either answer if you'd like out loud or, or one to just chew on the rest of the day. Complete this sentence from this chapter, I learned about my God that what? Um, again, no, don't have to answer this one out loud, but uh, one to chew on. Okay. Next week, there is no Sunday Bible class. Uh, we are switching to Mondays because of the worship times. You'll be meeting Mondays at 7 p.m. Uh, hopefully that works for, for everybody. Uh, we can record it still. Uh, that way, if you, Mondays are not a good night for you, you can come back and watch it later. Um, looking ahead to where we're going to be, let me, let me take a look here at my, my guide. Um, we're going to be talking about Jacob's time over and in uh, in the area where, where Laban lived, where he was traveling, what that looked like, what God did for him, how Jacob had some troubles of his own, how he dealed with another kind of Jacob. So that's what's up for next week. All righty. Uh, good to see you all, and uh, hope you have a, a good week. We shall talk to you later.